Ever wondered why German sentences sound so different from English ones? You're not alone. It's all about sentence structure, the framework that shapes our thoughts into words and phrases. Just like building a house, language too needs a solid structure. Only instead of bricks and mortar, we use subjects, verbs and objects. In the magical world of language learning, understanding sentence structure is like finding a secret key. It opens the door to clear communication and comprehension, allowing us to express complex ideas and emotions. It might seem like a small thing, but it's a game changer. Now, let's talk about German. The structure of German sentences has a unique charm, a certain je ne sais quoi if you will. The most common pattern we see in German is the subject-verb-object construction, or SVO for short. This is where the subject comes first, followed by the verb and then the object. But here's where it gets even more interesting. German sentence structure has a certain flexibility that English does not. For instance, while the verb typically follows the subject, there are instances where it can be found at the end of the sentence, especially in subordinate clauses. This flexibility can be a bit puzzling at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's like a beautiful dance of words. So why does this matter? Well, understanding how sentences are structured in German can help you better comprehend what you're reading or hearing. It can also improve your speaking and writing skills, helping you to construct sentences that sound more natural and fluent. In the next few minutes, we'll be exploring this fascinating aspect of the German language, breaking it down into bite-sized pieces, and showing you how to use it to your advantage. Whether you're an absolute beginner, a seasoned linguist, or just a curious soul, there's something here for everyone. So, buckle up language enthusiasts, as we embark on this exciting linguistic journey. Stay tuned as we dive into the exciting world of German sentence structure. Now, let's unravel the mystery of the SVO construction in German. Think of SVO as the basic building blocks of a sentence. These three letters stand for subject, verb, and object. In English, we often use this structure without even thinking about it. For instance, in the sentence, John eats an apple, John is the subject, eats is the verb, and an apple is the object. Now let's put on our German hats and dive into the world of Deutsch. Just like in English, German also uses the SVO structure, but with a twist. In German, the verb always secures the second position in a main clause, regardless of where the subject or object might sit. Let's break this down with a simple example. Take the sentence, Der Mann leist ein Buch. Here der Mann is the subject, leist is the verb, and ein Buch is the object. As you can see the verb leist comfortably sits in the second position, right after the subject. But what if I told you the subject doesn't always have to come first? That's right. In German you can start a sentence with the object, and it would still make perfect sense. Let's shuffle our previous example a bit. Ein Buch liest der Mann. Here, Ein Buch is the object, but it has taken the first position, followed by our verb, liest, still holding on to its second position, and finally, der Mann, the subject, at the end. It might seem a little confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll see that it's just a fun linguistic puzzle. So, remember, in German, the verb is like the loyal knight, always standing by the side of the queen, no matter where she goes. We're halfway through understanding the SVO structure. Hang on, it gets more interesting. Ready for more about the SVO construction? Here we go. Now let's delve a bit deeper into the fascinating world of German sentence structure. Unlike English, where the subject-verb-object order is pretty much set in stone, German offers a bit more flexibility. In German, the object can either precede or follow the verb depending on the emphasis of the sentence. For example, let's take a simple English sentence, I love chocolate. In German, we could say, ich liebe Schokolade, following the SVO order. However, if we want to emphasize the object, chocolate, we can switch it up and say, Schokolade liebe ich. This flexibility allows us to highlight the most important part of the sentence. Remember though, the verb is still the king in German sentences. Regardless of the position of the subject and the object, the verb often takes the second position in the sentence. So even when we switched things around to, Schokolade liebe ich, liebe, or, love, stayed in the second position. 
This flexibility is something that makes German a unique and expressive language. It allows us to play with sentence structure and put emphasis where we want it. But it's also something that can be a bit challenging for English speakers, where the object typically follows the verb. However, don't let this discourage you. With practice, you'll start to get the hang of it. And remember, the more you expose yourself to the language, the more natural it will feel. So, try constructing some sentences of your own. Experiment with the order, see how it changes the emphasis of the sentence. With that, we've covered the basics of the SVO construction in German. We've learned that while the verb often holds the second position, the subject and the object can dance around a bit. It's a bit like a waltz, isn't it? A beautiful language dance that allows you to express yourself in new and exciting ways. So, keep practicing, keep experimenting, and most importantly, have fun with it. After all, learning a new language is not just about rules and structure, it's about communication, expression, and connection. With that, we've covered the basics of the SVO construction in German. Having understood the SVO, let's summarize the key points about German sentence structure. First and foremost, the importance of sentence structure in German cannot be overstated. It's the skeleton that holds the language together, giving it form and meaning. Without it, words would simply hang in the air, devoid of context and clarity. It's the framework that allows for communication, and as we've seen, it's a framework that is both structured and flexible. Speaking of flexibility, this brings us to our second point. The SVO construction, or subject-verb-object, is the standard structure in German, but it's not set in stone. The beauty of German sentence structure lies in its flexibility. While English is fairly rigid in its SVO structure, German allows for variations, with the caveat that the verb always holds the second position in a main clause. This flexibility allows for emphasis on different parts of the sentence, enabling a range of expressions and nuances. The verb's position, as just mentioned, is a critical element of German sentence structure. In a main clause, the verb is always the second element, regardless of whether the sentence starts with the subject, the object, or an adverbial phrase. It's the anchor around which the rest of the sentence pivots. And in a subordinate clause, the verb moves to the end of the sentence. This might seem a little topsy-turvy at first, but with practice, it becomes second nature. Let's not forget the role of auxiliary and modal verbs. When present, they hold the second position in the sentence, pushing the main verb to the end. This is another aspect that distinguishes German from English and adds a layer of complexity. But don't worry, with practice, it all falls into place. So, there you have it. The key points about German sentence structure. The importance of sentence structure. The flexibility of the SVO order. The critical positioning of the verb. And the role of auxiliary and modal verbs. Now that wasn't too hard, was it? You've just mastered the basics of German sentence structure. Congratulations on taking the first step in understanding German sentence structure. Now, we're sure you're eager to put your new knowledge into practice. And the best way to do that? Start forming simple sentences in German. Remember, German, like English, often uses the subject-verb-object construction. So let's say you want to tell someone, I love pizza. In German, it's Ich liebe Pizza. Easy, right? But don't stop there. We encourage you to push the boundaries of your learning. Try to construct sentences that are a bit more complex, or sentences that use everyday phrases and real-life scenarios. Maybe you want to tell your friend about your new job. Or maybe you want to order a coffee in a German cafe. Go ahead and give it a shot. Remember, the key to mastering any language is practice, practice, and more practice. Every sentence you construct, every word you learn, brings you one step closer to fluency. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. In fact, make lots of them. It's all part of the learning process. You're not alone in this language learning journey. We're here to support you, to guide you, and to cheer you on. If you're unsure about a sentence you've constructed, or if you have any questions about German sentence structure, don't hesitate to ask. We're always ready and willing to help. And we're not the only ones. Our community of language learners is eager to lend a hand as well. 
so why not share your constructed sentences with them? You might get some great feedback, or even learn some new phrases. Plus, it's a great way to make new friends who share your passion for language learning. Don't forget to comment with your own examples and any questions you might have. We're all in this language learning journey together.